Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'd like to talk about how to compute northeast and down position for our flat earth rigid body aircraft model. If you've been following along in our series of videos talking about flight mechanics, this is actually a fairly simple topic today. If you're new to the discussion, I'll leave a link in the description below for some of the relevant videos you may want to check out first before continuing with the lecture today. Now, if you recall where we left off, we had developed a six degree of freedom, uh, rigid body, flat earth simulation of an aircraft. In particular, what we were looking at was our research civil aircraft model or RCAM model, right? And if you remember, this thing had um, a bunch of control surface deflection inputs U, and then what it spit out was a state vector X. And what was interesting about the state vector that we developed for this, again, it was a six degree of freedom flat <coughs> earth uh, aircraft model, right? And what we said is, okay, the state vector for this was actually, uh, well, let's, let's demux this. Let's use like some simulate notation and I will demux this. And it was three, uh, three sets of vectors stacked on top of each other, right? So the first one, it was the velocity expressed in the body frame, right? And then it was the omega B with respect to V uh, expressed in the body frame. And then it was capital phi, right? All of the Euler angles. So again, I guess if you wanted to break this out even further, what this one was, the first three, this was U, V, W. And then the next three were the rates correct p q r and then the last three states of our state vector were bank euler angle pitch euler angle and psi the yaw euler angle right so there were nine states right so this was really a nine element vector right so you have three uh translational velocities three rotational velocities and three rotational positions. So the question is, where are the three translational positions? Right? Where are those? They didn't show up in the state vector. Therefore, they didn't show up in the dynamics. And we, we saw that that was because the way we modeled this vehicle was that A, it was a flat earth model, and also we said that the aircraft is gonna behave the same no matter where it's positioned in space. So if you're flying over Seattle, or if you're flying over Portland, it behaves the same, okay? Now, that's not always true, right? Because also, we might actually care about the altitude, right? You, if you're a pilot, you know that the aircraft depends on the altitude, right? The dynamics depend on it because the air density changes. So we need to now add that to our model, and we need to add, there should hopefully be a way that we can now relate the state, the existing state vector, somehow be able to compute the position north, the position east, and the position down. And position down is basically like um, altitude, right? It's just a, there's a negative one in between here, right? So the question is, where are these three, okay? How are we going to get those three given the current set of states, okay? So that's the game plan. <laughs> now, with that in mind, maybe it might help if we remember and draw a picture of our aircraft just so we can kind of visualize what's going on, okay? So here's my picture of my aircraft. Let's say this aircraft is flying along and it's moving, uh, you know, here, I'll make this, this, this can be the velocity vector, okay? That's a velocity vector V, okay? So the question is, where does this velocity vector show up in our equations or our states? So obviously, I think if we draw a body axis, let's call this, how about, X body, right? And then I'll make the Z body axis like such. Maybe to make our lives, uh, and then I guess the Y body is coming out the right wing tip, right? That's the body axis, correct? So <clears throat> I guess I should probably make this a little bit longer because I want to project this. Okay, so if we project this velocity vector, right? Like such, this component here is U right because you that first state was all it was it was the velocity vector but the velocity vector of the vehicle expressed in the body frame right and similarly w this one is this if we exp if we project it onto the this axis right the z body so here's w right and then similarly v is projected onto that y axis but since i'm drawing on a 2d board i can't really draw that very easily 
Um, in fact, you know what? Now what we can do is I think it's very clear. If you remember our discussion on Euler angles, right? We said that the Euler angles relate how this body frame is related to the vehicle carry northeast down frame. So let me draw the northeast down frame and to make our lives easy, let's make the bank angle uh, zero, okay? That way I can draw the, the northeast down frame easily here on this planar picture. So the, the vehicle carry northeast down frame, right? Let's draw this in, uh, I guess we'll use black since that's the other color, the third color I have. Okay, so north is just kind of in this direction. So here's the X of the vehicle carry northeast down frame, which I'm using the V notation for, right? And then here's the Z of the vehicle carry northeast down frame. And in this case, since our bank angle is zero, our bank Euler angle is zero, the Y of the Z of the vehicle carry northeast down frame is a coincidence with the Y of the body frame, right? Okay, so <clears throat> all we're doing now is we just need to say, okay, uh, the vehicle is still going and this is the velocity vector V, right? It's this red vector. Now, instead of it expressing it onto the blue body frame, I want to express it onto this uh, black vehicle carry northeast down frame. So all I need to do here is I need to do this, right? And this vector, right, is I guess you could call it like, um, really, if you think about this long enough, this is the velocity of the vehicle in the, in the first component of the northeast down frame. So this is really velocity north, right? So I could say this is Vn. This is how fast the vehicle is traveling in the north direction. Similarly, if you take this vector and express it in the Z frame, right? This vector in this case, right? This is the velocity, right? In the down direction, correct? So really, I guess this convoluted picture, all I'm trying to say is that the only thing that we need to do is we basically have to just rotate the velocity expressed in the body frame. I need to express that velocity in the northeast down frame. That's literally all we're talking about when we're talking about these navigation equations to uh, get the position. So this is actually surprisingly simple. So we again, we just need to go remember from our Euler angle discussion, right? The way that the body, the vehicle carry northeast down frame was related to the body frame was through a series of three Euler angle rotations right uh, a yaw about the z-axis a pitch about the y act the intermediate y-axis and then a bank about the intermediate z, uh, x axis right so in other words from uh, from our Euler angle uh, definitions right we said that okay I can rotate from the vehicle carried northeast down frame to the one frame by yawing through the angle psi and this was a rotation about the z-axis, right? So this was basically, it was what it was cosine psi, sine psi, zero, minus sine psi, cosine psi, zero, 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 one, right? And then I could rotate from the intermediate, from that one frame, right? Rotate to the, in another intermediate secondary frame, the two frame by pitching through the pitch Euler angle and what that meant was really rotating about the y-axis. So I guess I got a 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, like such, right? Because I'm rotating about the y-axis. This is now cosine theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta, like such, right? And then I want to rotate from this two frame to the body frame by banking through the bank Euler angle phi. And this now was a rotation about the x-axis. So I got a one, zero, 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 zero. And this was cosine phi, sine phi, uh, minus sine phi, cosine phi, like such. Okay, and together, what all three of these, if we multiply them together, we basically get the direction cosine matrix that rotates from the northeast down frame to the body frame. So again, to be perfectly explicit, we now have the, the direction cosine matrix, which goes from the vehicle carry northeast down to the body frame. We see it is now a function of phi, theta, and psi. And what this is, is we basically need to multiply all these together in the appropriate order. So I guess, I have to start on the right with C1, V, then I need to multiply with C1 to 2, and then I need to multiply with C2 to body.
right? So here, this guy was basically our direction cosine matrix. And again, it goes from the vehicle carry northeast down frame to the body frame, okay? Now, coming back to our picture, right? I actually want, I want, I want the velocity, but I want the velocity expressed in the northeast down frame, right? So what I want is I want the velocity expressed in the northeast down frame, right? This is what I'm looking for. I need an equation which says, this velocity is equal to something. What do I already have? Well, we see here coming out of our simulation, we already, we're keeping track of the velocity expressed in the body frame, right? So I have the velocity expressed in the body frame, correct? Okay. Now, and I've got this DCM, I just gotta be a little careful with this DCM. Look at the subscripts, right? This is not actually gonna work directly, right? Cause I need, I need, I need to go from the body to the northeast down frame. This thing takes me from the northeast down frame to the body frame. Luckily, we know this is an orthogonal matrix, so all I need to do is transpose it. So in other words, what I need to jack in here is C, B, V, like that, but don't forget the transpose here, right? Because the, the transpose will basically, the same thing as switching the indices, right? So there, this is basically, uh, this is sometimes referred to as your navigation equations. Okay? And again, maybe we should be very explicit. What does this, what, what is this left side, this V expressed in the V, right? So in this case, the velocity expressed in the vehicle carried carry northeast down frame, we gotta be a little bit careful, right? This is the velocity north right? How fast the vehicle is moving in the northerly direction, and then velocity east, right? How fast the vehicle is moving in the easterly direction, and this is where people can get very easily screwed up. Now it's velocity down, okay? The last, the third element of this is the velocity in the downward direction. So if this, if this number came out to be positive 50, you're basically heading towards the ground at 50 meters per second, or whatever your units are, right? So a positive number here means you're going towards the ground. You're on your way to crashing, right? The reason I bring this up is because, right, we're talking about flight mechanics. We're talking about aircraft. Everyone in aviation likes to talk about altitude, right? We like to talk about H dot, right? How, what is your rate of climb here? How, or how fast are you gaining or losing altitude? So you gotta be a little careful, right? H dot is actually negative V down. So there's a minus one here that is very, very easy to overlook. So you, you just got to be a little careful um, of which one you're 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 talking about, okay? So um, with that being said, uh, let's see. Now that we have this, this is actually pretty exciting because if you think about this, what we can do now is uh, tell you what. Give me a second to uh, uh, pause the camera and erase portions of the board. I want to come back here and think about how do we modify our diagram now. Okay, now that we see that really the navigation equations and calculating position northeast down or velocity northeast down is really just rotating our existing velocity vector to a different frame, we can easily augment our block diagram here to, to include this calculation. So this is really quite simple. So it's really one matrix multiply. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make this, this direction cosine matrix here. And we see it's just three matrix multiplication. So really, and it's only just a function of phi theta psi. So really, what you can maybe think about doing here is phi theta psi right here. Just go ahead and make some kind of block, which its only job in life is to basically calculate uh, C, uh, B, V, right? B, V, okay? So coming out of this thing is the direction cosine matrix to go from the from the vehicle carry northeast down frame to the body frame, right? Then all we got to do is make sure we don't neglect the transpose. So then run this thing through a transpose block, right? Or do a transpose operation. So coming out of this thing is now C uh, from the body to the vehicle northeast down frame, right? Perfect. And then all we got to do is just do this matrix multiplication. So then I, t I need V in the body frame. That's already up here. So, uh, well, here, I'll tell you, let's remux this together. Mux this together. So coming out, this is velocity in the body frame. Now, all you got to do is have basically a matrix multiply. Okay, and I think usually in MATLAB Simulink, I think the matrix goes on the top. Uh, don't, don't quote me on this. I, can't, I can never get the, remember the order, but I think the first thing is the matrix, 
and then the second thing is the vector and whatever all, all we're doing here is we're trying to take this matrix and then right multiply it with the velocity vector and then what comes out of this is velocity expressed in the vehicle northeast down frame that's perfect so literally if i were to dow demux this guy again what comes out is velocity northeast down so i got the velocity in the north the velocity in the east and the velocity in the down direction Okay, and then again, we could maybe, you know, uh, take into account that negative one if you, if you like. You could stick in a negative one here, right? So now what comes out of here is H dot. So here, finally, what we have are, yeah, here, here's sort of our three outputs. Right? So now it's you see it's 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 pretty darn simple. Okay. The last thing we can maybe think about now is um, let me erase this to get ourselves a little bit more room. <clears throat> it's great that I know the velocity in the north, the velocity in the east, and your rate of climb here. But uh, what if you also want position? Okay. Position is actually, it's trivial, right? If you think about this, the position is just the integral of the velocity. So why don't you just jam this thing into, uh, you know, either a single integrator or three, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll make this three integrators just to make this explicit, right? I integrate velocity north, I get position north, right? I integrate velocity east, I should get position east. I integrate altitude dot I should get altitude so look at this this is awesome now here are the three translational positions so finally now we have a 12 state system and again this hopefully makes sense because you can see here's three more integrators right there were already nine integrators in here to keep track of these nine states so overall nine plus three is twelve which reconciles and makes sense for a six degree of freedom <coughs> system where we expect to have 12 states. So that seems great. The only thing we should maybe mention here is over on this side, right? You have to specify nine initial conditions to start the simulation, right? I need to say what the initial velocities and uh, uh, initial uh, rates and the initial Euler angles here. So over in these three integrators, you need to specify the initial position north, position east, and the initial altitude of your aircraft in order to get the simulation going. So, um... Yeah, that's, uh, that's probably pretty great. Now, this is uh, really interesting also, if you think about, we can now uh, apply this to some of our previous analysis and make more robust definitions for things like rate of climb, climb angle, and things like that. Um, so, tell you what, uh, let's see. Let's use this now to, like I said, revisit things like um, climb angle. Right. In one of our previous videos, I think where we were talking about trimming a uh, the vehicle for straight and level steady state flight, we put constraints on the climb angle of the vehicle. So we said that there was this climb angle gamma. Let's call this the climb angle. Okay. And what we said, again, again, physically, maybe what we should do is we should think about what does climb angle mean, right? Climb angle, if you think about this, it's really, if you have uh, an object, right? Let's, let's, let's draw the CG of the vehicle or something like that, right? And let's make the local horizon like this, right? A climb angle of zero means that the, the center of mass of the vehicle, it's not gaining uh, altitude, it's not losing any altitude, right? It's just basically going in this direction. So the gamma in this case is zero, right? There's no, it's not, it's not going up and it's not going down, right? A positive climb angle would be something like this, right? Like here's a positive gamma, like a gamma of positive five degrees or something like that. What that physically means is that the vehicle is, it, it, in whatever attitude, who cares, but its center of mass is, is moving upwards at an angle of five, five degrees, right? That's physically what the climb angle meant. So a higher climb angle meant that you're basically gaining altitude, right? A lower climb angle means you're losing altitude, right? Or sorry, a negative climb angle, okay? Now, earlier... Before we had these navigation equations, we said uh, gamma was equal to uh, the pitch angle minus the angle of attack, right? And we said that in this case, this was, what was pitch angle? It was x 
it was the eighth state, right? So this was the eighth state minus the angle of attack we said was uh, basically a tan two of the uh, W, right? Which was, I guess, the third state, X three, and then V, uh, sorry, U, X one, right? This was our equation for climb, for climb angle, okay? Now, the problem with this is this is only valid if uh, phi is zero, if you have zero uh, bank angle. So again, to, to visualize that, I've got an aircraft here, right? So the, this climb angle definition, maybe I should make in the same direction, right? This made sense. If, if, you, had, if you were pitched up, right, at say 15 degrees, but your, and your angle of attack was also 15 degrees, it meant that the vehicle is moving along something like this, right? It's not gaining any altitude, right? But you're pitched up. So this equation would correctly predict that, oh yeah, your climb angle is zero, right? However, there are situations, like for example, if your wings were not level, like if your wings were like this, let's take an extreme case of 90 degrees, okay? And uh, your pitch angle could also be zero, and your angle of attack could be non-zero. Like what if you were going like, oh uh, man, this is really hard to see. Uh, I guess if you're doing something like this, I'm kind of going into the board, right? In this case, right? If, if, if I'm doing something like this, I think everyone would agree that the climb angle is zero, right? Because the, 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 the aircraft's not moving up or down, right? But in this case, your angle of attack is a positive number, right? Wind is hitting the bottom of the aircraft, right? So my pitch angle is zero, but my angle of attack is non-zero. Basically, this equation is going to incorrectly predict that your climb angle is some negative number, when really the aircraft is not gaining or losing any altitude, right? So it, the, the climb angle should be zero. Basically, this is a bad equation in any situation where you have a non-zero bank. And usually when you're maneuvering, you have non-zero bank, right? So we really need a better expression for, for climb angle if we're gonna use it in things like numerical trim optimization routines or any other kind of analysis. So this is really pretty poor. Uh, we don't need to do this anymore because now we've got the machinery in place that we can go ahead and formulate the actual expression for, um, for climb angle. And the way we can do that is if you think about this, that's what this is telling us, right? The velocity of the north, velocity east, velocity down. This is telling us the velocity of the center of mass of the vehicle, irrespective and doesn't care what the attitude of the vehicle is, right? So if the vehicle is something, you know, it's in some crazy attitude like this, it's some wonky Euler angles, and it's going up or, or it's going down or something like that, this, these signals, will track what the center of mass of the vehicle is doing. So we can really abstract this away to almost like a point mass where we don't care about the attitude or the Euler angles anymore. All I care about is where is the center of mass of the vehicle going? So if that's the case, let's draw a picture of this. A more robust definition now. Let's, let me see if I can sketch this all on one. I'm gonna try to draw a 3D picture here. So here's, uh, here's north. Let's go east like this and then down. I'm trying to draw a three-dimensional, so these should all be right angles, theoretically, okay? So let's say that the vehicle is doing something like, I don't know, we'll draw the center of mass here maybe in red, right? At the origin of this frame, right? Because that's what this vehicle northeast down frame is. This origin is attached to the center of mass of the vehicle, okay? And this thing is, let's, let's make it climbing. So this vector I'm trying to draw is a little bit out of this plane. Maybe to make that explicit, I'll try to project this down into the plane and I'll draw the, uh, let me draw it in a different color. Maybe the gr green will be the projection of this red vector into the northeast plane. Okay, so this is supposed to be a right angle there, okay? Okay, perfect, perfect. Let me, uh, okay, let's label the red vector. So this red vector, this is the velocity expressed in the vehicle northeast down frame, right? That is this vector right here, or right, right here, okay? Now, this green vector, right? If you think about this thing long enough, I think everyone will agree that this vector is the component of velocity in the north and the east direction, right? So this thing's length, it's basically what? It's velocity north squared plus velocity east squared 
square rooted, right? That's this distance, okay? What is this vertical distance or the distance or the amount that the red vector is out of the northeast plane? Well, it's just basically it's the velocity down, right? Or in fact, actually, we gotta be, again, we gotta be a little bit careful. In this picture, it's negative velocity down, right? So this is negative velocity down. That's this, uh, maybe I should have drawn in red, but I, well, I think it's okay. We'll do, we'll do like this, okay? Now, overall, I think everyone will now hopefully agree that uh, g given our description of what climb angle means, it's how this, it's the angle that this, this, this center of gravity, its velocity vector makes out of the northeast plane, right? It's how much altitude are you gaining or losing, right? How fast are you climbing up or down out of the northeast plane? So the climb angle is actually right here, right? So this is gamma, right? It's the angle, like you start in the, the green vector, right? The green vector is in the northeast plane and then you start increasing gamma until you hit the red vector, right? Okay, enough blabbing, maybe I should just write this down. So given this picture, I think everyone will hopefully agree that a more robust definition of gamma, right? The climb angle, <clears throat> this is actually a tan two. And again, we gotta be a little bit careful about our definitions, right? I want, the climb angle to be positive when I'm gaining altitude. Basically when h dot is positive or when velocity down is negative. So this should be negative velocity down, right? This is the y component of my a tan two call. The y component and then the x component, right? That's the green vector distance, right? This is now velocity north squared plus velocity east squared square rooted, right? And this was the x component, right? Great. So this is a much, 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 much better definition of climb angle because it takes into account the attitude of the vehicle, right? The attitude of the vehicle doesn't show up anywhere. The reason why it didn't show up anywhere is because we, right, it, it got taken into account right here, right? Here's where the attitude of the vehicle gets taken into account into all of this, um, this, this equation, right? So this, this will work for any attitude. It doesn't matter if the aircraft, I mean, the aircraft could be inverted, right? The aircraft, you could be doing some crazy maneuver where the aircraft is, whoa-oh. Crud, oh well. <laughs> well, if the aircraft's inverted and it's going, flying like something like this, right, there's still a positive rate of climb, this equation will pick that up, right? So, this is awesome. Um, similarly, on a similar vein, while that, now that we've got this picture up, the other thing that, uh, you know, climb angle is also important. Um, for navigation purposes, sometimes people are interested in uh, course angle. Maybe I'll try to I'll try to squeeze all this in here. Let's talk about course um, angle. Okay. So typically this is referred to as chi here. So chi. This is basically telling you a course angle uh, is used for navigation, and it basically tells you which direction. I'm going to put this in quotes just because I'm shooting from the hip here a little bit. But the direction of center of mass in the northeast plane. Sometimes people get heading and course angle uh, mixed up. Course angle is really talking about. Let's uh, let's let's let me see if I can find some place to sketch. I, let's just draw this right real fast up here. Okay, so here's north east, right? You got your center of mass, you got your vehicle sitting here, and a course angle of zero means that the the vehicle is heading due north. Okay, so here's chi equal to zero. You're heading due north. If your, if your course angle is 90 degrees, you're heading due east. So here's chi is equal to 90 degrees. And I think everyone understands everything else in between, right? Now, where this gets interesting is you might, some people incorrectly state that, oh, here's your, here's your course angle, right? This is your yaw angle, right? Isn't that all this is? This is not true. Psi is not equal to chi, <laughs> even though they rhyme. Because, let's take, an, let's take an example of like a boat, right? You got a boat right here, okay? Um, the boat, you could be going something like this. You could, be, you could be pointed in a different direction. So in this case, I'm drawing the, if this is north and this is east, 
right? I think everyone would agree that the heading angle of this, here's the heading angle. This is psi of 45 degrees. It looks like it's about 45 degrees. The front of the boat is pointed in directly the northeast direction. However, the, the, the vehicle could be going like this. It could be it could have a course angle of due north. It could just be the center of mass is still going due north, even though your heading is pointed somewhere completely different. And obviously that extends even more so to aircraft where you have, you know, multiple degrees. You know, you could be in a crabbing situation, right, where you are kicking over the rudder and you are now crabbing and side slipping your, maybe I should, maybe I should come right at the camera, right? Um, you could be, again, kick the rudder over and the thing could be crabbing and side slipping in a fashion where the heading angle, the yaw, the psi, the, the heading uh, yaw angle, Euler angle, is very, very different from the direction where the center of mass of the vehicle is going. All right, so that's why the course angle is much more important for navigation, right? Because I really don't care which direction my nose happens to be pointed. I care where the center of mass of the vehicle is going, right? So a lot of times the course angle is more important than the heading angle, right? I need to make sure my my uh, my attitude of my aircraft is something can be anything it wants, but I just need to make sure that I'm going in the right direction. So given that definition, I think everyone will agree then that, okay, I need to use these signals to compute my course angle, okay? And from this picture, I think everyone would agree that, okay, if your vehicle is, you know, like this, here's the velocity of the center of mass. And basically, this is the velocity expressed in the vehicle carried northeast down frame. That's this vector right here. So if this is my course angle, right? I guess we can also draw it here on this bottom picture. Maybe let's draw this here in, in, uh, in blue, I'll draw it as a second picture. Right, so the course angle, it's in the northeast plane. I basically take the angle that the north direction makes with this vector, right? I need to go from the north axis until I hit the green vector, and the green vector is the projection of the velocity vector into the northeast plane, right? So this blue angle is my course angle chi, right? And basically, what we can end up with that is, uh, if, you, if you think about this longer, and again, you've got to be a little careful with um, taking into account, I want a course angle zero to actually point to uh, due north. So let me just write it down. Shucks, I'm running out of room here. I really want to fit this in because this is really the last thing that we need to do. Um, maybe let's just write it here. Here, okay, so with a course angle here, it's going to actually be pi over two minus a tan two of the position, whoops, oops, no, sorry, the velocity uh, north and then the velocity east, okay? So again, this pi over two minus this, this takes into account the fact that I want um, zero to be pointing, uh, to correspond to, to the vehicle going due north and I want pi over two to be uh, due east and et cetera, et cetera. So here's a much better definition for, or actually here's our only, our new definition for course angle here, okay? Okay, all right. So before we leave this, maybe the last thing, the last parting shot I want to put in is there's a couple of other ways we could also think about augmenting the diagram. So now that I think we have a good understanding of the navigation equations and we see that all that the navigation equations are, are basically this part, right? Let me, let me just block it up in kind of a blue. Sorry, this is not the cleanest <laughs> picture, but we saw all we're doing is tacking on it all we're doing is adding three states and it's really it's one matrix multiply that's all this thing is right the other way you could think about augmenting your RCAM model or your aircraft model to include this is we really could think about just doing that within the MATLAB function which defined this RCAM model right so if you remember earlier we had let me just write this in MATLAB here and then we'll go take a look at it. I just want to talk about the real real quick idea function. I think this was x dot is, we made something called rcam model uh, dot m and I think what you passed in was the state vector and the control vector, something like this, 
all right? You made this MATLAB function, and that is what's, what's under the hood here, right? This was the magic that can capture, can encapsulated all of the dynamic and the equations of motions and all of the forces and moments and all that kind of good stuff was in this function, right? So there was a, there was a whole bunch of junk in this, right? And eventually, at the end of this, um, what we ended up wa with was something like x dot is... Basically, this was a nine element vector. Right? And what this ca captured, right, this nine element vector was you're calculating u dot, v dot, w dot, p dot, q dot, r dot, phi dot, theta dot, psi dot, right? So all we need to do is basically shove this down a little bit and include one matrix equation. That's all we need to do is, is, is to make this addition. So really, what I'm going to suggest here is take this, shove it a couple of lines down, okay? Maybe I'll move this down here. So you now have x dot equals something. Okay, we're going to get to what that something is in a second. Here, all this stuff above is existing code, right? What you already had uh, for the nine state system. Right? All we're doing now is we're adding one more set of equations. So the last three states, right, was now position north dot, position east dot, and h dot. So really, all you need to do is you, we're going to add a couple of lines here where you're going to say position, uh, well, actually, you know what we can do? We can do it like this. We can say velocity expressed in the V frame, right? This is the velocity in the northeast down frame. That is nothing more than velocity expressed in the body frame, and then I rotate that thing from B to V, right? This is it. You literally add like one line. I guess you might have to add a couple lines to define what this direction cosine matrix is, right? It's just that three by three we talked about earlier. Or you know what? You might even have had it in here. Depending on how you implemented your, your previous set of code, you might already have calculated this direction cosine matrix. So all you got to do is basically stick it in here. This thing that you calculate, this is going to be a three by one vector, right? And if you think about this long enough, what is this? This is basically position north dot, position east dot, position down dot, right? As a three element vector, right? So all you have to do now, at the very last line of code, earlier you had x dot is equal to, again, this was probably something like x1 to 9 dot, right? That's what you had earlier, right? You're calculating the derivatives, again, of, of u dot, v dot, w dot, p dot, q dot, r dot, phi dot, theta dot, psi dot, right? That's this thing. Now, all you got to tack on to the bottom is this last element, right? So now jam on this 3 by 1 of v in the northeast down frame. Right? So now x dot is actually a 12 by 1, right? Because you're calculating state derivatives for all 12 states. Three translational velocities, three rotational velocities, three rotational positions, three translational positions, right? So if you do this in your RCAM code, in the, in the code, and do this, what that is going to do is suddenly this guy will now natively spit out all 12 states. This now, well, maybe I should just cross this out. Goes from 9 to being 12, right? And what this is going to do now is it's going to add on velocity, uh, or, sorry, oops, sorry, excuse me. Uh, this will now position in the vehicle carry northeast down frame as a vector, right? And then you wouldn't need to do any of this other stuff. All the stuff in the blue, you wouldn't have to add on these extra blocks and whatnot. Right? You could just go ahead and natively uh, uh, spit those out. So, um, tell you what, uh, maybe now would be a good time to pause and jump over to MATLAB just to see how we're going to do this. Full disclosure, um, I actually like sort of this uh, method better, where we leave the RCAM model sort of untouched and implemented as a completely separate block. Um, we'll get to that why in a little bit later, but maybe uh, instead of me continuing to ramble, let's jump over to MATLAB Simulink and see what I'm talking about.
All right, so here we are back at our good old familiar aircraft model, the RCAM model. And uh, as you can see here, I've modified and augmented this RCAM model. Now, instead of just outputting these first nine states, I've added the code underneath the hood so that it can implement the navigation equations and also now output position northeast down. So just to refresh your memory, I'll flash up a screenshot of what I basically did in the RCAM model. So as you can kind of see, like we talked about on the board, the first section of the code is basically the exact same previous RCAM model dot M uh, code that we use to basically compute X1 through X9 dot and then adding the navigation equations to get position in the northeast down frame is really just a couple lines of code like we said like we said earlier it's just computing the direction cosine matrix taking its transpose and then basically rotating the velocity from the body frame to the velocity in the northeast down frame and then you just stack those onto the bottom of the vector so the final x dot is now 12 states which are now um, all the ones that we care about right the three positional uh, three translational velocities three rotational velocities three rotational positions and now three translational positions as well so that's one way to do this is option A. Option B was, um, whoops, sorry, let me remove that. Uh, because none of the dynamics in our particular model were a function of the position, we could also alternatively implement this in sort of an op option B format where the navigation equations are implemented as a completely separate block. So that's what I've done right here. And you can actually see that, um, let me look under the hood of this uh, block that I've made. This is basically uh, the, the same operations that we did uh, using the rotation matrices. I've just kind of already done all the explicit uh, multiplications and matrix multiplies just to get a series of equations which involve a whole bunch of cosine signs and all their mixed terms. And I, unfortunately, it looks a little bit like spaghetti here, but this is literally all I'm doing, right? Is I'm doing this matrix multiply, but instead of being smart and using a matrix multiply block, um, I did this a while ago and I just kind of hobbled it all together. But mathematically, it's all the same, right? All this is doing is implementing the uh, navigation equations like we talked about. Again, with the one caveat that you as an uh, implementer get to pick, do you want to put to spit out position down dot or h dot? So in this case, notice that I chose to use h dot. So uh, when you integrate it, right, we get position north, position east, and altitude, not position down. So this signal right here, whoopsie, this signal here is negative one of that signal right there. So again, just be careful. Um, I will mention that I do kind of uh, prefer this uh, method here, and especially this method where we implement the navigation equations kind of as a separate block, and in particular, spit out the velocities instead of doing the integration implicitly and getting positions. I would recommend you do something like this. Build yourself a block which takes in UVW, phi theta psi, <coughs> and spits out uh, velocity northeast and, and velocity down or h dot, whichever one you want as long as you document it. The reason why is in the following video, one uh, immediately preceding this one, or uh, immediately coming after this one, we are going to look at geodetic coordinates, which are going to need velocity east and velocity down to compute things like latitude and longitude. But again, that's a discussion for another topic. So, um, with that being said, I think what's great about this now is... You know, position north and position east, this is kind of great for plotting and guidance and being able to see where the vehicle is going, but it really doesn't affect the vehicle too much, right? It doesn't, shouldn't matter how far north or how far east you are. It shouldn't really affect the dynamics of the aircraft. However, the altitude, like we said, the altitude can definitely affect the, the dynamics of the aircraft. So what you may now need to do or how you could augment or improve the fidelity of your model, right, is you could send this signal here into like a atmosphere table or something something like that where it would look up air density based on altitude, right? And then based on that air density, that might further influence things like the dynamic pressure or other um, signals within your model. So if that was the case, what you would probably have to do is feed this altitude signal back 
into your model and use that to compute some of these. So in that situation, it might be better to have this situation, option B, where you are internally computing the position uh, north, position east, and the altitude, because then you could use that signal directly. In this formulation and this implementation, it's a little bit difficult to get this signal influencing the dynamics of your equation directly. So again, there are pros and cons to each one of these approaches. I wanted to show you both so you can choose whichever method is more appropriate. And while we've got Simulink open, let me show you one more thing to validate our approach. Let's come up here to the Simulink library browser. Let's come here to Aerospace Block Set, Equations of Motion, 6 DOF. And let's grab this block, this 6 Degree of Freedom Euler Angles block. So this is MATLAB's um, Aerospace Block Set implementation of effectively the Flat Earth Equations of Motion. So basically, kind of what we were doing by hand here, MathWorks has already created a block which does similar operations. In particular, if you open this block and we come here to the help menu and what I'm interested in is if you look here this second output called XE if we go and look at that I think it will describe uh, here the second output this is the position of the flat in the flat earth reference frame namely position north position east position down let's see how do they choose to implement that so if you look under the mask of this block mask look under mask right this thing xe this is position north position east position down that's what we were just talking about as being uh basically rotating the velocity in the body frame to the velocity in the northeast down frame and then integrating well let's just trace this signal back and see how it's implemented here's the integrator we talked about so that means this signal right here this is velocity in the northeast down frame and in fact you can see that right here how do they get that hey look at this it looks like it's a matrix multiplication between look at this the direction cosine matrix right the DCM going from um, uh, body to northeast down and then this signal which is if you trace it back look at that it's UVW so under the hood this block is doing the exact same calculation that we just talked about all right, so now that we've augmented our aircraft and now have all 12 states coming out, let's think about, does this have any ramifications on other analyses that we've done? Particularly, for example, um, we in our previous video, we talked about how to find trim points of a vehicle. In particular, we use an example of flying in a steady state, straight and level flight condition. So the way we did that is we set up these set of constraints and formulated the problem as a numerical optimization problem. So we should maybe think real quick, do any of these um, need modification okay so the first thing I actually want to look at is actually this first set of constraints if you remember earlier we said we wanted the aircraft flying steady state straight and level um, at 85 meters a second with no climb angle no side slip no bank angle and and pointing north right now with this discussion when we've augmented this the first thing we need to look at is what does this mean right here this earlier if you recall this was our steady state condition right but now if you think about this what are we trying to do let me grab my prop again right physically what we're what we're doing and what we want is we want the routine to come up with a with a set of states and control which yield this type of behavior right the aircraft is flying straight and level at a constant speed right the problem is suddenly this adjective steady state is actually not really uh accurate anymore because if the aircraft is flying straight and level sure maybe UVW these are not changing PQR are not changing Phi Theta Psi are not changing but I guarantee you these what some of these have to change right the aircraft is moving the the north position is probably changing like crazy right so what I'm getting at is you can no longer find an equilibrium point in this case. So we're finding now a trim operating point because really the aircraft is flying along, but this is changing. P north dot is not equal to zero. So if you try to enforce this constraint in your numerical optimization routine, the optimizer is just gonna throw up its hands and say, you can't do that. There's no way I'm gonna make the aircraft fly straight. I mean, it's not a helicopter. You can't just sit there and hover and not move, all right? It's going to have to allow one of these to be, to be non-zero. So you can't actually do this any longer. So instead, maybe what this needs to be modified to in your op optimization routine, it needs to be something like X dot only one to nine are equal to zero right I only want these first nine states to be zero I only want those states to be in equilibrium I don't care about these other ones because I know some of them are gonna have to change 
Okay, so the, the ramification on this is if we change this here, suddenly whatever we solve for is not gonna satisfy x dot is equal to zero, right? The entire state vector is not gonna be equal to zero. This is, this is gonna be happening, right? Therefore, whatever we solve for is not an equilibrium point, right? Technically, mathematically speaking, we can't call it an equilibrium point because the, the, the state dot, dot is not zero. But again, I think this illustrates the fact that the reason why people kind of interchangeably use the word equilibrium point and trim point is the, you know, equilibrium is not terribly important in a lot of situations, right? For example, this case, the aircraft is still just flying along, right? All we're doing is we're mathematically saying that we're allowing some of these states to change, namely position north and position east. I don't really care if they're changing, okay? So that's one modification to your optimization routine you may have to make to account for this. So what else? Uh, this is still fine. Oh, gamma, we talked about this, right? Now we can probably, when we're computing gamma, let's use our better definition of gamma to enforce this. Earlier we used just, I think, theta minus alpha, which we talked about was the bad uh, formulation. So now in your trim routine, I would augment my uh, equations to use this definition of gamma so that it might take into account it might be able to handle cases where you know you don't have the, the wings level in this case we're enforcing this but you know what if you wanted some amount of bank right maybe you maybe for whatever reason you want to be banked over and still flying straight and level this if you put in your new definition of gamma that would be desirable okay so that's the other thing we can augment. Then finally, all these are pretty fine. And again, this was somewhat arbitrary, right? Psi equals zero. Earlier, what this meant was I want the heading uh, pointing uh, north, right? Which is a perfectly fine constraint. You could alternatively now use our definition of chi for our course angle. And instead, maybe you could say, I don't really care which direction I'm pointing. I just want the vehicle center of mass to be in, moving in the north direction. Again, this is kind of something you can play with if you'd like. It's not really um, uh, necessary for the augmentation. So, uh, all right. So with that being said, uh, I think this is a good spot to leave it for our discussion of navigation equations. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, I also hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. If you just scroll a little ways down and click on that subscribe button, it really does help me continue making these videos. And please, uh, I, I've said this before, but I really would appreciate it if you could leave me a comment, let me know what you think, or if there are other topics you'd like me to cover in the future, leave that in the comments below, and I'll try to get to those as I work my way down the list of videos to make. So, uh, I hope to catch you at one of these future videos. And until then, I think I'll sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.